Okay, in today's lesson, we're going to continue to look at regular polygons, but this time we're going to need trig in order to find the area of the polygon. So let's just review real quickly. Um, with regular polygons, remember that the formula is one half the bases times the apothem times the number of sides. What we have here in our square is we have the radius, so we need the apothem. I'm just going to draw the apothem in over here. If the radius is 20, centi 20 meter, millimeters, okay, in a square, remember that the diagonals, and this would be a diagonal, cuts the right angle into two 45 degree angles. So I've got a 45, 45, 90 triangle, which means that my apothem is going to be 20 divided by the square root of 2, which is going to give me 20 root 2 over 2, or 10 root 2. Remember, we have to rationalize that denominator, so we've got to multiply both the top and the bottom by the square root of 2. So now that I know the apothem, um, and then I need to know the size of the length of the base, well, the length of the base is also opposite a 45 degree angle. However, it's only half of it. It's 10 root 2. The whole base is going to be 20 root 2. So now to find my area, I'm going to do 1 half times the base, which is 20 root 2, times the apothem, which is 10 root 2 and then times the number of sides, which is 4. Okay, Half of 4 is 2, so I'm going to get 2 times 20 root 2 and 10 root 2. Remember that when we multiply radicals, we multiply the coefficients together and we multiply what's under the radical together. So I'm going to get 20 times 20, because 2 times 10 is 20, which is 400, and then two, root 2 times root 2 is root 4. Well, the square root of 4 is 2, so I'm going to pull that out, and I'm going to get 2 times 400, or 800 square millimeters for the area of this square. Let's look at another example real quickly. Now I've got a septagon. We did a lot of those yesterday. We know what the apothem is, um, but we need to find the base. And remember that one of these big triangles is 360 divided by 6, which is 60 degrees, which this makes that angle 30 degrees. Okay. If I were to pull out my, rec my triangle, with my 30 degree angle, and I know that this is 5.5 root 3, the side opposite the 60 is always the short side times root 3, so the short side is going to be 5 root, 5.5 root 3 divided by root 3, which just gives us 5.5, but that makes the whole base 11. So if I want to find the area of this, okay, I'm going to get area equals one half the base, which is 11, the apothem, which is five and a half root two, and the number of sides, which is six. So when I multiply all that together, I'm going to multiply the one half, the 11, the five and a half, and the six, so that I get. One eighty one and a half, and then root two. Okay. Now let's talk about real quickly trig, just as a review that the trig is the Sokotoa sine, cosine, and tangent. If I've got my angle theta. This is the opposite side, 
this is the hypotenuse, and this is the adjacent. Okay. So if I wanted to find, I could find what theta is um, by using tangent. Just as a reminder, if I'm finding angle measures, um, I have to use, we're going to use tangent theta equals opposite over adjacent 16 over 25. And remember when we're finding angles, it's tangent of negative 1 or the inverse tangent of 16 25ths to go ahead and find that. Okay. Remember that your calculator has to be in degree mode or it's not going to work. So inverse tangent of 16 divided by 25 is going to give us about 32 and 6 tenths. Okay. Now the story is different if I know what an angle is and I'm trying to find the sides. And that's what we're going to deal with in this lesson is finding the sides. So let's go ahead and let's do another triangle. And let's say that this angle is 25 degrees. And I know the hypothesis opposite is 4, and I'm looking for, say, the hypotenuse, okay? So since I've got the opposite and the hypotenuse, I'm going to use sine. So sine of 25 equals opposite over hypotenuse. So I have to multiply both sides by x, and then I would divide both sides by the sine of 25. So that's what we're going to be doing in this section, is finding side lengths. And 4 divided by sine of 25 degrees is approximately 9.46. So this is what we're going to be using with the trig right here. All right, so we want to find the area, and we want to leave this in simplest radical form. I have the radius, but I don't have the apothem, and I don't have the side. So this triangle, this is a pentagon. So if I were to draw my big triangle, this angle right here is 360 divided by 5. And that's going to give me 72 degrees. But we're, what we're looking at down here is half of that angle, so we're going to divide it by 2. So this angle right here is 36. Let's draw the triangle out. I'm really a big proponent because I like to label and write things in of doing this. 16 and 36. And I need the apothem. And I need this side. So I'm going to use trig to do it. And like I said before, when I taught trig, I always throw this up at the top of my paper so that I remember how to do it. So I'm looking for, got the hypotenuse. If I'm looking to find the side, S, then that's the opposite side. So opposite over hypotenuse is sine. So I'm going to use sine of 36 equals the opposite side, which is S, over the hypotenuse, which is 16. So S is 16 times the sine of 36. So 16 times the sine of 36. And let's round these to the nearest hundredth. And in this case, when I do that, it's going to be 9 and 40, 9 and 4 tenths. So we need one half equals ban. This is just half of what B is. So if we double that, it's going to let me get B. So my B is going to equal 18.8. 18 and 8 tenths. Okay. Now I've got to find the apothem. And now we're going to use, because it's adjacent side, we're going to use the cosine of 36 equals the apothem divided by the hypotenuse, which is 16. So our apothem is going to equal 16 times the cosine of 36. 
So 16 times cosine 36 is approximately 12 and 94 hundredths. So now I have everything I need for my formula. So my area is going to be 1 half. The base we said was 18 and 8 tenths. The apothem was 12 and 94 hundredths. And n is going to be the number of sides, which is 5. And I see in my directions, I say leave this in simplest radical form. Let's actually round because using trig functions, we don't really leave it in simplest radical form. So I apologize about that. There's your mistake for the day. So if I multiply 18 and 8 tenths times 12 and 94 hundredths times 5 and divided by 2, I'm going to get my area to be approximately 608 and 18 hundredths inches squared. Okay. So there is the area of that polygon. Now here's one we're not going to draw it. Um, let's find the area of a decagon with a radius of 5. So my decagon is going to have 10 sides. Okay, so if I was to draw one of the sides, let's just draw a side. Okay, and the radius is going to be here. So if I was to draw the other side off there, you can see that. Okay. And then we can drop this triangle in here. So the bigger angle is going to be 360 divided by 10 or 36 degrees. So the little half angle is going to be 18 degrees. Okay. So that means now that I need to find one of the half that side and I need to find this apothem. Again, we're going to use trig. By the way, I know yesterday we talked about special right triangles, but if you don't remember that ratio, you can always go back to trig. All right, so to find my side, I'm going to use the sine of 18. So equals my opposite over my hypotenuse, and we said R equals 5. So over 5, so S is going to be 5 times the sine of 18. So 5 sine 18 is about 1 in 55 hundredths. Okay. And then I'm going to find the apothem by using the cosine of 18 equals to the adjacent which is our apothem over the hypotenuse, which was 5. So our apothem is 5 cosine 18. So 5 cosine 18 is approximately 7.5 N. Oops, sorry. It's approximately 4. 0.76. So now again, we have everything we need for our formula. So the area is one half band. So one half the base, we need to double the side. And when we double the side, it's going to be three and one tenth. The apothem is four and 76 hundredths. And there are 10 sides to a decagon. So let's multiply this all out. And I'm going to get my area to be approximately, because we've done lots of rounding, so we should say approximately 73.78, and it would be units squared, since I didn't give you a measurement. Okay. Now we want to find the area of the shaded region. So we're going to have to find the area of the big. And we're going to have to subtract out the area of the small. All right. 
So there's a little couple of things going on here. So let's take the big one first. And again, this is a pentagon. So let's just go back here real quick. And in the pentagon, we said that that angle was 36 up at the top. Okay, right, so we're going to use that 36. Okay. So remember that this was 360 divided by 5, which gave us 72. And when we split it, that's where we got the 36. So if I pull out, and these are all radiuses, if I do the big triangle, my radius of my big triangle is 7. And we said that this is 36 degrees. So I'm going to call this side 1, and I'm going to call this apothem 1, so that I can tell the difference from them. Okay. So if I take the big, and I'm going, to, I need to find um, the... Apothem and the side. Okay, again, the side is going to be sine of 36 equals the opposite over the adjacent or over the hypotenuse, which is 7. So my side 1 is going to be. 7 times the sine of 36. Which is approximately 4 point 4 and 11 hundredths. If I double that to give me the first base. I don't know where that circle came from. It's going to be 8. Point two, two because we've rounded already. And so I'm going to use that. Circle it so I underline it so I know I'm going to use it. And then the apothem of the first one is we're going to use cosine. So cosine 36 equals first apothem divided by the hypotenuse of 7. So the apothem is going to equal 7 cosine 36 or approximately 5 and 66 hundredths. All right, so I'm going to actually write these up here so that we can keep track of everything because there's a lot of work. Okay. And now let's find the second ones. All right. So for the next triangle, for the smaller one, my radius is going to be 5, and we're going to go through the whole process again. Okay? So I've got sine of 36 for my base, or side 1, over my hypotenuse of 5. I'm not going to write everything down this time since I've worked through it more than once. So 5 times the sine of 36 is going to be approximately 2 and 94 hundredths. If I double that, my base is going to be 5 and 88 hundredths. And then to find my apothem, I'm going to use the cosine of 36 equals the apothem divided by 5. So the apothem is equal to 5 times the cosine of 36. And my apothem is going to be 4 
point four and five hundredths. All right, so we want to find the area of the big and subtract out the area of the small, and these should actually be twos, if I'm keeping track. Okay, so the area of the big one is going to be one half the base, which is eight and 22 hundredths, times the apothem, which is 5.66, times the number of sides, which is five. Okay, and we're gonna subtract that from the area of the small, which the base is approximately five and 88 hundredths. The apothem is approximately four and five hundredths, and then again by the number of sides of five. So my area of the big shaded region is going to be, if I find the area of the big, multiplying all this stuff together, is approximately 116 and 313 thousandths. And the area of the small is about 59 and 535 thousandths. And if I do that subtraction, I'm going to get to my area to be approximately 56 and 78 square meters if I've rounded to the nearest hundredth. That was a lot of work. Thanks for sticking with me. Got one more example for you. And this is using trig to find the area of a triangle. So I can do that by doing if I'm trying to find, say I know what angle A is here. Here's angle A. And the area of the whole triangle is one half the sides of that angle, C and B, times the sine of the included angle A. So let's look at an example so that we can see what it looks like. So here I've got my included angle of 33. If you think back to the chapter on included angles with sides in that. The area of this is 1 half, okay, 12 times 11 times the sine of 33. Okay, and that's all there is to that. So my area of this triangle is approximately 35 and 95 hundredths inches squared. So when we don't know the height now, if we have an angle that's included between the two sides that we know, we can go ahead and find the area using trig. Okay, just to recap, the area of a regular polygon is one half band, which would be the base length, the apothem, and the number of sides. We might have to use trig now and we can find the area of a triangle if we don't know the height by using trig as well. Long lesson. Thanks for sticking with me. Have a very good evening.